On today's show, my friend Sean Bagshaw and I are going to talk about heading out of town for a few days of shooting. We're going to look at some of his photos to see what he's got on previous trips like this and uh, talk about what we're going to do. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. But you knew that. I do know that. You do. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> My friends, this is Sean Bagshaw. Sean is a phenomenal, phenomenal landscape photographer. Actually, he's just, he's just like a hack. He doesn't really take good pictures, but I figured I'd be nice to him, bring him on the show. No, his stuff is kind of insane, kind of ridiculous. I did a, um, a tour, uh, not a tour, a workshop with you. Mm -hmm. Four years ago? Yeah. It was think, a while ago. I think Up it's in been, Bend. Yeah, it's been at least that. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot. That's because um, I don't do landscape as a rule. That's not my thing. Um, obviously, it's great to do. You know, it's always fun. It's nice to get some fresh air, make some pretty pictures, but that's just not my thing. But I figured, and I go out with you, you obviously know a thing or two about it, learn some stuff. And I definitely learned some techniques out there, um, even Lightroom techniques, learned a few things there because yeah. I was still getting, getting used to Lightroom at that time. That's right. Um, that was right kind of when the switchover was Well, that literally it was that, that trip, yeah. right? That yeah. weekend, I was completely stressed out because that was the weekend that Aperture got killed. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that, was, uh, that was not too much fun. So tell, tell me about what we're doing. Where are we going? I actually don't really know where we're going. <laughs> I can get in a car with him. I have no idea. But we're going out for a few days to shoot some pretty pictures. We're going to look at the kind of stuff that we're going to get. But yeah. tell, tell us where we're going. So... Uh, well, as, as landscape, if anybody out there is a landscape photographer, I think everyone knows Oregon is kind of a, a, an excellent place to be a landscape photographer because it has uh, just a huge variety of, of landscape terrain that's really beautiful and really not overcrowded. Don't tell anyone to, yeah, that about, tell that. But, about that. Uh, but here in uh, the Rogue Valley in Southern Oregon where we are, uh, we're not too far from the Southern Oregon and Northern California coast. And that's where the uh, California coastal redwoods are. Okay. So we're going to go to the redwoods. And uh, also the whole coastline along there is super dramatic, beautiful uh, Pacific coast. And also there's an area we're going to go to called the Bald Hills, okay. which is kind of up in the hills um, above the redwoods. And you get above the redwoods and the hills open up. And this is the time of year, if it's a good year, when there are just some amazing flower blooms up there. Nice. And so I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen reports to know if the right. flowers are good this year, but we'll we'll find out later today when we get there. Okay. But if they are, it's spectacular. And are we going to be in? We're going out for two nights. Are we going to be in different places tonight and tomorrow night? You know, a trip like this until we get there. A lot of times we'll formulate the plan. There's lots of places to shoot, so we have no lack of potential. If it's good up there, we may just decide let's just you know, uh, burn all our sunrises and sunsets in, in the hills with the flowers because okay. the redwoods are always there. Got it. Um, but if the flowers are not looking great or if, you know, if it's going to be cloudy or foggy or something like that, then we may say, yeah, let's head down to the trees or get down the coast or something like okay, that. Okay, so Bald Hills, that's our first stop. That's where we go You today. definitely want to go scope that out and see what that's looking like, and that'll then kind of determine mm -hmm. what we're going to do next all or right. how we're going to proceed. Very good. Well, let's take a look at some pictures from previous years here sure. of, uh, of doing trips like this. Uh, just give us a quick rundown. What are we, what so are we looking at That's here? the Crescent City Lighthouse. And um, yeah, Crescent City is kind of the last uh, town in California if you're coming up the Coast Highway before you hit Oregon. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, the lighthouse that's out on the point there in town. Nice. I, I'm sure I've seen that before, too. That's, yeah. What a spot. And uh, of course, the Redwoods. I mean, that's kind of what that whole part of the coast is really famous for. Just massive trees, beautiful, lush, you know, forests, green ferns. Yeah, you know, trails going through. It's really a fairy tale land. So you're, I know that you do a lot of uh, exposure blending, and that's what how you get. Or maybe not particularly that shot, but that's how you get a lot of the really dramatic images. Uh, for any given image like this, how much time do you, on average, spend? Or is there any such thing as like some are just a few minutes, some are a few days? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> it really depends. Um, yeah, if you've got a really, uh, you know, broad dynamic range, and you are having to uh, bracket exposures to get it all uh, captured, you know, because it doesn't fit in one one exposure value. Right. Uh, and then you're having to blend those together, or if you're doing a lot of other kind of intricate um, uh, developing work, then yeah, it can really uh, take a lot of time. Sometimes the forest shots with soft light like that, uh, you know, they come out of the camera pretty close. You do a little contrast, a little color work, and, and you're there. Got it. Got it. That looks like it's got a little bit more going on there yeah some great light in the background 
Yeah, and in the forest, you know, forests are tricky, and I think a lot of people have difficulty, especially with light in forests and deep forests. They're, they're in there in the middle of the day. It's sunny. There's, you know, you've got spotlights of light coming through. You got deep shadows, exposure all over the place. So one of the tricks is just shoot when it's really uh, when the sun's not up. So as I took this about four in the morning, it was oh, no almost kidding. pure dark. That's like a, I don't know, two or three minute exposure to get, but that's the light that was filtering in. It was very, you know, dim light, okay. but it was beautiful, soft, even light. And, uh, and this is another thing, hopefully we'll see the rhododendrons in the, in the uh, redwoods if they're blooming. Okay. And again, those year to year are really variable and also when they actually bloom can be anywhere from now till the end of June. So we'll see what we see. We'll see what we get. Excellent. Yep. So um, I see Burns second here saying the photos are amazing. I completely agree. Oh, thanks. Yes, he told you. He didn't know what he's doing. Um, which, by the way, for those of you who are watching live, if you have any questions for either of us, make sure you put them into the chat, the live chat there. Put photo just in front of it so we can see it and we'll bring it up on the screen and uh, do our best to answer your questions. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Whoa. So that is a location that's called uh, Secret Beach. That's actually in Oregon, but it's just on the Oregon side of the California border. Uh, so to, from where we're going to be, that's not a far drive. Okay. Uh, and then there's lots of coastline like that down in the, uh, the Redwoods in California where we're going to be as well. Wow. Yeah, sea stacks, right. just dramatic coastline. Beautiful. Yeah, that's and that's Oregon. I mean, I love this kind of coastline. We have this much more dramatic than just simple beaches that you get in Southern California. This is this the is long so much cooler. Sand, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the Oregon coast. Uh, I mean, there's some great coasts around the world, and Oregon's right up there. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. All right. Let's see what's next here. Um, redwoods. These are, I, I, I believe uh, that these, you know, the the coast redwoods are the tallest trees in the world. I think the actual most massive trees are the sequoias in the uh, in the um, um, Sierra Nevada range, okay. like Sequoia National Park. They're actually kind of thicker and stumpier and mm. more total mass, but these are the tallest. Nice, that's pretty cool. We do have a question coming in. Um, Tony sure. Hill is saying, "Hi, Sean. What filter system do you use?" Filter system. Um, well, I've uh, the last. Let's see. It's probably been a couple of years now using all uh, breakthrough photography filters. Uh, breakthrough photography um, started as I think just like a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something like that. Kickstarter, I think. Uh, they're out of the Bay Area, and um, they've really expanded in the last couple of years. They have some excellent products, um, high quality, super great stuff, and I just use all of their circular filters, screw on type. Um, and I'm using polarizers uh, and neutral density, and they have a, a filter called a dark CPL, which is a polarizer and a neutral density all in one. Okay. So instead of having to stack, you know, like a six stop ND with a with a polarizer, you mm -hmm. can just use the one filter. It's kind of oh, nice. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right on. We'll put a link to these in the show notes. Uh, that's, that's absolutely awesome. yeah. Break, good breakthrough to know. photography, great stuff. New company, the kind of. Um, thinking out of the box too, yeah. filters which you would think might be hard but they're definitely doing some stuff that no one else is doing that's great can argue with that right, let's get these slides back up here um, next up oh what happened here oh there it goes there we go so just more redwood scenery um i think we'll be a little early for the trillium that's what those flowers are uh but it's fun to you know Take those photos where you've got these, you know, little delicate things sure. in this massive tree kind of, you know, imposing in the background. You only see the, just the very bottom of the trunk, but you know what it is. You know what it is. <laughs> is this, uh, would this be focus stacked? Uh, this one was, yeah, this, so this was a long process. This was focus stacked and exposure blended. Wow. Because I've got direct sunlight hitting in, you know, on the, on the uh, flowers and parts of the trunk and other places and then deep shadows and then also, yeah, extreme de uh, depth of field just because mm -hmm. I'm so close to those flowers in sure. the foreground. Sure, and I think it's worth pointing out that the exposure blending that you're talking about, you, you mentioned you know, a broad dynamic range, that, so you need to capture right. multiple exposures. But this is not HDR photography from the traditional sense of automated blending. This, all this exposure blending is manual. It's, Correct. It's essentially the same concept, take the properly exposed areas from multiple photos and blend them together, but it's completely manual. It is, it's, it's manual and um, yeah, so it's not, no software involved other than Photoshop and you're doing uh, masking techniques, right. you know, layers of masking in Photoshop. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a tricky thing to learn and to get it really good at it is, takes time, you know, it's definitely not a quick process. Right. 
but I like it better than anything that HDR software is able to do because HDR software is kind of taking all the pixels from your various exposures and mushing them together into one set of pixels. Right. Where this is, you're taking the original pixels that your camera caught and you're taking the best pixels from this section of the image and I want to use those pixels there. But then down here, I want to use these pixels right. from a separate exposure and it's those actual pixels. It's not some amalgamation that the software mushed together. And so you have more control and I think in the end, better quality. Nice. Yeah. And, and you said it takes some time to learn, and I know I've tried a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, you have training on this. I do. Unplug that. I do, yeah. Where, where can people oh, find uh, the training? So you can go to my website, which is outdoorexposurephoto.com. And uh, yeah, if you go to the tutorials page, I have lots of different tutorials, and there's one called uh, Developing for Extended Dynamic Range. Nice. And this is something also that, you know, when I started, I kind of, myself and other photographers, really with digital photography, when it first kind of came in, we're looking like, how can we work this? Cause this has been a limitation in film. You know, like if you've got too wide of dynamic range sure. for your film, what do you do? Well, you can use graduated filters or different things. But this idea of being able to blend different exposures together, immediately wanted to get on that. Uh, and those early digital cameras, they didn't have very much dynamic range. So there were a lot of scenarios that were beyond the capabilities of the camera and it required this. The cameras keep getting better and better and they can capture a wider and wider dynamic range in a single exposure. So the number of instances where I use this these days gets fewer and fewer. Oh, interesting. But when you hit those scenes that do go beyond what your camera can capture, it's you know the best way to go. Nice, very cool. All right, let's see what else we got here. What are we looking at here? So that's what the Bald Hills looks like. Ooh. And so the green down in the valley below, the, you know, the kind of fading into the, the light down there, that's the, you know, those are red, that's redwood forest down there okay. eventually. But when you get up above the redwood forest in the Bald Hills, uh, you get these open meadows, oak trees, and just these huge lupin blooms that just spread out across the, uh, the meadows up there. And like I said, some years it's amazing. This was a particularly uh, really good year. Nice. And uh, other years I've heard people go up there and don't see much Just at all. Nothing, so it'll be a surprise. That's nature. That's yeah. nature. So. We have some other comments coming in here. Tom sure. Murphy says, have either of you ever shot at Little River Canyon in Alabama? If not, you recommend it. It's a hidden treasure. I haven't. I have not either, but I believe uh, my friend and colleague David Cobb, who's mm. done a lot of traveling and photographing um, kind of in the south and the east and the Midwest, uh, that may be a location he's been to. I know he speaks highly of a lot of locations in the south and in the east. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, Sounds like you got to do some more I, road I, trips. My kids, my, my kids are a couple years away from you know leaving the nest, and uh, yeah, once they're out of the house, my my plan is I want to spend you know like a whole or a whole months of time you know traveling the east coast yeah. and the south because I know there's just so much, so much to see. Yeah, yeah beautiful. That's what a digital is saying in here. The Oregon coast and views is that why a quarter of the world's photographers seem to reside in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good yeah. reason to be here for sure. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's maybe that's the case, um, but definitely there are a lot of photographers, landscape photographers, coming out of Oregon and uh, or who have moved to Oregon, mm -hmm. and not even just you know the current generation. But if you go back, I mean, we've got some uh, kind of uh, legacy photographers going back to the '60s, '70s, and '80s. Uh, who are just spectacular photographers, you know, traveling the state. Um, and then people like, uh, you know, kind of some famous people from the, from the 90s, 80s and 90s, like George Lepp and uh, John Shaw moved to Oregon, um, probably because of all the great photography yeah. and a good lifestyle. Yeah, that's true. Clean air, fresh air, water, all that good stuff. It's, yeah. uh, we do have a bit of that here. Yep. I'm right, just flipping through the last few of these pictures on sure. here. Yeah, uh, more uh, redwoods, you know, rhododendrons. That's a rhododendron grown out of the side of this old dead uh, uh, redwood stump. And uh, yeah, just beautiful. Nice like, misty morning. Yeah, this grove is right near the ocean. So when the fog comes mm -hmm. in off the coast, it just creates this wonderful atmosphere. Yeah, love that. That's, that's such a nice thing about it shooting out nature like that, getting that natural fog that comes in, it can be so beautiful. And it can very quickly just completely ruin the shot. Right. Where it's just done. Yeah. But yeah, if you get just the right amount. You gotta be right on the edge of having just the right amount of fog without too much. Yeah, absolutely. And then if the sun comes through the fog, then you get that. You get that, that's, <laughs> yeah. wow, stunning. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that we see some of this while we're out there. Yeah. Hey, let's talk gear for a minute. What sure. uh, What are you shooting with these days? So I've been a Canon shooter my entire career. Okay. I started with um, really one of the very first little 
you know, fixed lens, point and shoot type Canon digital cameras that, that they had that came out. Uh, and then, yeah, so I've just kind of worked through that. And the 5D series is the one I've been with, uh, you know, for the past uh, probably decade or more. Um, and currently 5D Mark IV, it's a great camera. Um, yeah, and I like Canon, the build and the layout and all that works. Uh, they've been lagging behind Nikon and um, Sony and so a few others in recent years. 5D Mark IV definitely got them closer oh, in good. some capabilities. So, yeah, that's nice having having. Oh, that is that camera. the one that's super high resolution? It's not their 50. I have that one too. I have the 5D SR, which is a 50 okay. megapixel camera, uh, which is a great camera. But honestly, the 30 megapixel 5D Mark IV has such clean image files that mm. even though there's fewer pixels, I feel like I can actually do almost more in terms of enlarging Interesting. with those files because they're so clean wow. and uh, yeah, sharp and everything That's looks cool. good, yeah. And one of the things I learned when we did the workshop in Bend all those years ago was that you shoot with long lenses a lot more than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. Landscape, I think a lot of people, and I, I did at least for landscape, you think, oh, you want a wide lens, get the wide lens, get the whole landscape in, but you're not doing that. You're shooting with a long lens for a lot of things. Right, yeah, definitely. I think landscape photography with a telephoto lens is great. Yeah. Uh, especially if you can get up some high vantage points and be able to zoom down on things, um, or in a forest scene like the Redwoods, being able to um, kind of isolate, you know, we got a lot of busyness and to be able to zoom in and just choose little vignettes or segments out of the bigger scene. Right. So yeah, a lot of times in, in when I'm out shooting, I'll start with the kind of the big wide angle, take it all in sort of shot. Um, but then once I've kind of, it was really, you know, with, if you've got almost 180 degree view in a 16 millimeter lens, <laughs> You know, there's only so many shots and you've right. taken them all. Right. So then once I've done that, now put on the long lens and I can start going in and picking okay. out little things. And in fact, uh, another landscape photographer uh, from the UK, Thomas Heaton, recently did a, a, a video on his uh, YouTube channel where he talked about that. And he said, yeah, sometimes I'll go and instead of one shot with my long lens, I've got six different shots. And I didn't even move my tripod, you know, because I can just rotate and right. zoom in on different places. Right. Cool. Well, because of that, for those of you who are waiting for a better review of the new Lumix 200mm f2.8 lens, that's why it's sitting here. To remind me, I am taking this with me. Um, this is going to be the place where I finally get to put this through its paces. Because I'm not a sports photographer, so I don't really have that opportunity to shoot. Right. But I knew this trip was coming up. I wanted it for that. So I will give you a, a comprehensive analysis of that with some good, hopefully some good picture samples. Well, that's a beautiful lens. It's, it's, it's nice. It's a really good build quality. I'm excited to, uh, to take it out there. Very cool. And actually, incidentally, before I forget that too, I want to put this up. There's uh, there's a promotion going on right now. It's like a promotion month. This goes only till what is it, June 17th or so. But all the Leica lenses are on a discount. This is just from your regular dealership. You can go wherever you normally shop and uh, pick these deals up. But this particular lens is actually $500 off right now. So uh, that's obviously a heck of a deal if you're thinking about it because it's not a cheap lens to start with, and this definitely helps uh, helps make that a little bit easier. So do check that out. Um, all right, let's. Uh, Let's talk about where you just came back from briefly, and then we're going to wrap this up because I got to pack and get ready for this <laughs> so trip. Great, like, right. we're leaving in like a few hours. I got to pack. Yeah, um, you just came back from somewhere I've I've heard of but never really knew anything about called the Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands, yeah, Tell and it's a place that. that I you know I didn't know much about it uh, until just maybe just a couple years ago. Okay, and I think that's the case for a lot of people. Uh, there, it's eighteen islands. They're very small islands. Um, some of them are very close together, and they're in the North Atlantic, kind of in between Iceland and Norway, about 200 miles due north of, of well, a little north, one side or the other, but anyway, Scotland. Okay. So if you went to northern Scotland and then went another 200 miles north across the, the, the North Atlantic, you'd, you'd okay. be at the Faroe Islands. And they are just uh, just amazing, wind-swept, wind-blown, grassy. There's, there's no, there are no trees. Um, there's a lot of sheep, very few people. And just amazing sea cliffs, waterfalls, uh, oceans, and you know the weather out there is just always blowing through. It's always dramatic and stormy, or not always, but a lot of the time. Right. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, high winds and high surf, and this is a, this is probably the most famous photography location. Um, on the islands that you see a lot of photographs from here and the islands are starting to be more and more visited now i think in the next couple of years it's going to kind of go like iceland mm. a lot of people are going to be there 
but uh, at this point, it still feels like it's you know a little bit undiscovered. We didn't see a ton of other people there. Uh, we were kind of in the off season too. Okay. But uh, that yeah, that view is kind of the real famous. You see that a lot, and that's a waterfall coming off the cliff there. But it was so windy, the waterfall was being blown backwards, back that's up, crazy. you know, back up against itself. That's that pretty incredible. awesome. Oh man, what a sight! Wow. Yeah, just huge sea cliffs, sea stacks. Um, you know, that sea stack out there is probably 500 feet high. It's just enormous. And you're up on the cliff. And at this point, because people, you know, it's not a, hasn't been a tourist destination. There's, there's no viewpoints. There's no railings. There's no, mm -hmm. don't go here signs. Um, <laughs> I think that's coming. Darwin is at its finest. Yeah. But at this point you can put yourself right on the edge of the wow. edge of the earth. If you want. No McDonald's and Starbucks everywhere. It's no. true undiscovered country. <laughs> yeah. For now. Anyway, <laughs> that's just so incredible. I mean, it looks like uh, something out of a movie. It's just uh, 3d rendered almost. It's yeah. just so, it's great. so crazy. And we were there for, for seven days. I was traveling with my friends, uh, Rainer Sirwinski and Josh Merrill, both professional photographers. Rainer's out of Colorado and Josh is in Chicago. Okay. And uh, we were there for seven days, stayed in a couple different parts of the islands, traveled around a lot. And we had about 10 minutes of this kind of light one wow. morning, and that was it for seven days. And the rest of the days, it was more like the other photos you're oh, seeing. Oh, really? Yeah, like uh, this. Like the, oh, <laughs> but it's still but, great, though. Yeah, I mean, this is, that's the light that I would want. That is so cool. Yeah, and this is another very um this is probably the other real popular well-known location on the islands that people photograph it's mm -hmm. this lake which is just above the ocean oh, there okay. so you've got these cliffs and actually the, the big photo that everybody likes to take is they go to that point that you can see out there mm -hmm. and um shoot back towards the lake and there's an optical illusion it looks like the lake is actually lower than the ocean from that angle oh, interesting. yeah even though it's okay. a couple hundred feet higher yeah huh. that's cool yeah, it's it's beautiful what a sight God, yeah. That's just incredible. And that's, you know, that's kind of what it looks like on the islands. Um, you know, fjords, mountains, lots of grass and rocks and little villages on the little, each little cove, nice. kind of little villages. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Oop, and that's that. That's that. That is the last picture. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you for showing that to us. Where can people see more of those pictures? Well, I'm still working on those pictures. Okay. So slowly they're getting up. They'll be, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, the social media outlets, uh, that kind of stuff. Eventually I'll be putting together kind of a behind the scenes trip video, just kind cool. of fun, nothing, just for pictures set to music probably. Did you fly the drone out there? Yeah, I did a little bit of drone drone flying. Uh, so yeah, I hopefully be able to put something together video wise. And then I'm currently having a new website built, so I probably won't oh. put any of these images up on my current website because okay. we're working on the new one. It should be hopefully ready in a couple of weeks. Okay, great. And uh, Yeah, so that's... Cool. And what is that website? Oh, sorry, outdoorexposurephoto.com. And you can find me, uh, you know, on all the social media stuff. Just look for Sean Bagshaw. Sean Bagshaw everywhere else. Yep. Very good. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you very much for coming in. This Thanks is beautiful. Now I'm, I'm super inspired now for what we're going to be out shooting. I think we're going to have a good time. And plus, I, I just got to mention, so we're meeting up with Zach Schneff, who's one right. of the Photo Cascade team. He's coming with us. That's awesome. And also He's my cool. friend, Paul Imperia, who's another Southern, or uh, Southern Oregon local here. So the four of us will be out just, you know, hanging foul and getting in trouble and telling lies and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Excellent. Well, be sure to follow all of us on Instagram because we will be posting photos and so I know you're really good at the stories. I never do stories, but uh, you're good at posting the stories. Stories are fun. Yeah, we'll have to see if we, if, I don't even know if there's any signal out there. We might be totally off the grid. Oh, I yeah, know, yeah, You'll yeah. go through withdrawals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stack them all up. You'll know we hit signal because suddenly there'll be 30 things that hit, uh, hit Instagram at once. Exactly. Right on. Right. Good stuff. Well, thanks again for coming in. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See if there are no additional questions. Nope, nothing else in there. Uh, thanks a bunch to people. And um, Wednesday, I will be in the middle of nowhere. So as he said, we probably won't have signal. There probably will not be a live show on Wednesday. If I can, I will go live with the Mevo, but uh, don't count on it. However, I'll be back Wednesday afternoon or evening, right? We're coming back. So um, I'll probably do a show Thursday. If I don't get to do Wednesday, I'll do a show Thursday morning to make up for it. So we'll see you then. And uh, yeah, let's go have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. See ya.